Ben here, welcome to part two. We're going to jump straight into the design process, but before we do, we just need to check that you've got everything you need to be able to follow along at home. In part one, I showed you how to download a training file from our online store, import it into Fusion, convert it to a T-spline body, and then align the new body with the origin. So go ahead, grab those files, and if you haven't seen part one already, there's a link to it here and in the description. First thing we need to do is go into the display settings, select visual style, and then choose shaded with visible edges only. Then go back into the camera settings and I like to pick perspective with ortho faces. Finally, you can also change the environment that you're in just in case you're sick of looking at a gray screen. Let's pick blue. Much better. Next thing we need to do is head into the create form space, select a cylinder, place the cylinder on the XZ plane, center it on the origin and just make sure that the sides extend past the outside of the body. It doesn't really matter too much how far you go, but just keep it quite tight. I like to work with eight faces, the height of 10 millimeters, and only a single row. Click OK. We're now gonna make the trim line of the top of the socket by manipulating the cylinder into place. Ideally, what we're looking to achieve is to try to follow the curve which runs around the top of the trim line or the neck of the socket. You can see that this curve is defined here and here. And if we turn to the side, you can see it continues on each side all the way around to the front. So let's get our body back up and visible. And we're going to right click and click edit form on this body. What we want to do is rotate it slightly. So we're looking for this end to be somewhere up here and for the front end to be somewhere around there. That'll do nicely. Click off the object. This time, select just the front four faces. Use the Navi Cube to achieve the side view and the rotation wheel to drop the front of the socket. As you can see, that's lifting the geometry at the back. And we can correct for that by translating the geometry that we've got selected using this pad. It's always useful to keep coming back to the side view because everything is lined up with the origin. So the Navi Cube gives us the true view and it's why we chose perspective with orthographic faces. Now working to the back, select these two faces. Then working to the front, do the same thing. That's about right for the first step. The next thing we want to do is to bring additional rows of geometry down to the bottom of the stump when we're going to close it up and then start checking our work for gaps and overlaps. So to do this, what we need to do is highlight the bottom edge. Just check there that it's all highlighted. Select the arrow button, press Alt and then pull down. Once we've created the new geometry, we just want to scale it slightly in the horizontal axis. Do the same thing, scale it some more, and so on, all the way down the socket. Until we're almost horizontal at the bottom. For the final row, we will grab the scale bars and enter the number manually 0 0.0001. That's as flat as we can get. From here, Things look okay, but if you turn to the side and look face on, we can see that everything is elongated out to the sides. So we just highlight the entire body. Again, right click, edit form. And I'm just gonna select the top of the Navi Cube. What I wanna do is use these scale bars to just pull the sides in. Like that. Then return back to the side view. So we select pull from the shortcut menu you can access it from the full menu. And on the right hand side, there's a tab there where you can pin it to the toolbar. Since you're going to be using it a lot, it makes sense to pull that up in the toolbar. Hit the pull command and these pull points suddenly emerge. So we just create a window using the left mouse button, cover the entire area and hit OK. And that's pulled quite nicely. It's given us a nice defined upper socket. 
create a little bit more geometry at the bottom, but before we do, let's just get this 100% smooth again. So edit form, and we'll just smooth out those irregularities by manually entering 0 0.001. Just as we did before, we'll select the bottom edge, edit form, hit the arrow, press Alt, pull down, create some more geometry. This time, however, we're gonna look from the base up and we're gonna use the corner scale bar for the first time. What this will do is scale in every direction and pull that in. We can see the tip is just sticking through. And I can see that because it wants to center, when it closes using the corner scale bar, it wants to center away from the natural shape of the uh, stump. So you can see there, this ghosting here at the side there, that's actually flesh. So we're going to pull this back, perhaps open it up a tad. And that's good. We'll now complete the bottom of the socket by using the fill hole function. So in modify, come down to fill hole and it will automatically use my favorite one, which is the reduced star. Click OK. Let's just have a look how this is shaping up. I don't think Sol would be able to get that on his arm because of the uh, gap at the front. So I'm going to try and modify that now. So that the gap was large enough. That looks better to me. And then we'll introduce the flare. So in the edit form uh, window, you want to select local per entity. And we're gonna use the outer scroll wheel to make sure that each one of these upper splines is rotated out 15 degrees. And we'll do the same all the way around. The next step then is to check that there is no overlap between the T-spline and the geometry that we've just created. And what that means is visually inspecting from all angles to make sure that there are no areas of overlap. You'll see the overlap as a ghosting against the blue background. There are a few main ways that we address that. The first one is to just constantly keep pulling the geometry back to the T-spline and identifying the areas where it fell short. In those areas, you can either insert an edge, so just highlighting an edge, right-clicking and selecting Insert Edge, bringing that into the area that you want to use it, selecting it, and adding a point as well. Now that changes the geometry locally quite considerably. So again, turn to the side, select the Pull command, and pull all of the new points to the T-spline. Sometimes it's a question of just adding a new point, and sometimes it means manipulating things directly. Once you're happy, it's time to turn this into a solid body and do some proper analysis using the T-spline. Hit finish form, select the body that we've just created and go to create and thicken. I've also added this to my shortcuts. For analysis purposes, two millimeters is fine. What we now want to do, is turn on the origin, go to the inspect menu and click section analysis. Starting at the top of the model, slowly work down, trying to identify areas where there are overlaps or gaps. Near areas where there are bony prominences, such as the olecranon at the back and the condyles, it's vital that you've given enough room to complete the corrections then you just need to keep flicking back between the section analysis and the edit create form space down in the timeline make the changes in the create form space finish those forms and then see how that translates into the socket when you've got a socket that you're happy with all we need to do is quickly put a base on it and we're done so right click on the ground plane offset the plane looking from the front 
bring the plane to just below the base of the socket but not too far. Okay that and then create a sketch on that plane. What we want ideally is a circle. I don't like to put it on the origin because I don't want it to um, constrain itself there. Finish the sketch. Select the circular profile, press E to extrude and come to the dialog box and select to object and select the test socket. For the operation we want to join rather than cut. Hit OK. Final thing to do, press F to add a fillet and I usually start with 44mm but have to adapt it. You're looking for the best printing. The more overhang you have the more likely it is you'll need to print with support material. The thicker it is at the bottom the less likely it is that you'll be able to diagnose a problem if it's down in this area. So bear that in mind you want to use the smallest fillet that you can to print without supports. Press OK. Don't forget to put a fillet on the top for comfort of fit. Select the inside edge. This is a 2mm thick wall so I'm going to do a 1.5mm fillet and then separately a 0.3mm finish on the outside. Now we're good to go. Check sockets are best printed in transparent PLA or PETG. It helps to diagnose where the tissue is pushing against the socket. To assist you can also drill holes in areas of concern and use a cotton bud to probe the resistance from the soft tissue indicating whether you can go tighter or whether you need to back off slightly. Every time you make a change, save the file, label the file, keep version control. So I'll print this off now and hopefully in a couple of hours we'll be ready to test it on Sol's arm. Well that's it from me, if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do, it's the one thing that you can do to really help us to grow the channel and become more established. The more established we are, the more people we can help. So please do it right now, don't mess around, subscribe. Make sure you also join us in part three where we'll be doing some adjustments to this check socket and catching up with Sol for a check fit. Thank you very much, take care of yourselves, see you on the next one.